Good evening, and welcome to this uh, meeting of the Ashkash uh, Board of Education for Wednesday, February 25th, 2015 at 6 p.m. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes. Please call the roll. Peter. Here. Eliza. Here. Turner. Here. Herzog. Here. Lemberger. Here. Sagenhack. <coughs> Here. We have a quorum. Tonight we will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by two, uh, three students from Webster Stanley Elementary School, Eric Duran uh, Kachu. Uh, Emily Duran and Ava Duran, please stand and follow them in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our appreciation. We have certificates of appreciation. There's one for you, one for you, and one for you. You are welcome, and uh, you are certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. But we know that these meetings can be long and boring. Uh, so you're also welcome to go home and enjoy your evening as well. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the superintendent's report. Yes, this evening, and I trust that um, I will be guided along the way uh, for February 25th. Uh, first of all, um, we had a celebration uh, last week. Um, uh, a big thank you for everyone for the dedication of the opening of the Three Waves uh, Clinic and Wellness Center uh, and uh, open house that was attended um, by a great number of individuals. Uh, the Three Waves uh, open house um, was a major success. Guests began arriving ahead of the 1.30 p.m. start, and traffic through the office was busy the entire day. The estimate attendance was uh, some 500 individuals. Many patients were able to ask questions about the new clinic and take home new patient paperwork and set up appointments. Uh, this effort, um, especially thanks uh, to uh, Mike Nault and to Sue Schroer, uh, who worked in partnership with uh, with the city um, and the county uh, to make this happen and um, uh, we um, uh, are so pleased uh, that we ended up with partners from the city of Oshkosh and Winnebago County uh, who are extremely pleased to be a party to the event. Uh, family night at Franklin Elementary School. Uh, Franklin Elementary School sponsored a family literacy and math night on Thursday February 19th. Many families braved the cold to attend this special event. After a light dinner, families took part in literacy and math activities. In, in the gym, students rotated between stations to play math games. Fifth grade student council representatives facilitated the games. In the cafeteria, students and their families listened to a special presentation on literacy at home by Dr. Michael Ford from UW Oshkosh. Three students um, won door prizes, um, which consisted of a special hardcover book. Each student received a treat bag at the end of the evening. Thanks to the many Franklin staff members who volunteered their time to help with the events on the family night. Traeger Tales. Uh, showing appreciation at Carl Traeger Elementary. Love was in the air at, uh, at Carl Traeger Elementary during the Valentine week. They did a pride print uh, switcheroo where students had the opportunity to acknowledge staff uh, for exhibiting the, the following core values. Being responsible, be sa respectful, be safe, and be trustworthy. Uh, each student was given one pink pride uh, print to recognize an adult. Uh, pride prints are part of the school-wide acknowledgement uh, system and staff use them to reinforce the pro-social behaviors they observe. Staff enjoyed being recognized by students during the week. Additionally, uh, students in grades K-2 delivered singing valentines to uh, staff members throughout the week. Special thanks to Mrs. Schmidt for organizing this Traeger tradition. The OASD uh, uh, participated in the corporate challenge at the YMCA, uh, and you can see the results of that effort with the exception of the coffee cup. Uh, uh, three plaques for individual uh, activities plus uh, uh, the major trophy. Uh, the, our uh, Knowledge is Power team took first place in the men's cornhole, volleyball, and uh, pickleball. Other highlights include second place in the team triathlon and third place in dodgeball and the three-point shootout. 
the combined efforts of all of the participants in bringing home first place and the coveted corporate cup which is exhibited here this evening congratulations to all the participants who represented the school district again uh, thanks to uh, uh, all who participated uh, in this effort it's our continued effort to make sure that our school uh, integrates itself very well with the school entire community learning about DNA Dr. Tom Zinman, uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison Biotechnology Department came to work with Mrs. Hilscher's seventh grade students at Carl Traeger Middle School. The students learned about the purpose and the process for uh, electro, I'm going to turn this one over to John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from Phoresis, phoresis. Phoresis, uh, which is now DNA uh, molecules, mole molecules and separated and analyzed. The students analyzed alien blood in order to identify the aliens found at a crime scene. For K News, uh, the 20th Avenue downtown YMCA uh, got together for a gallery walk. And each child created six masterpieces which were displayed for parents and classmates to see. Uh, the kids were so excited to show off their work and as you can see the walls full of art exhibits. Oshkosh Boys uh, Diving Team competes at the state meet. Congratulations to, to Nate Summers, uh, Mitchell Slezak, uh, Jacob Slezak, Cole Kunz, Taylor Stino, uh, Sean Jarosley, uh, and Jacob Longruff uh, on qualifying for the WIA State Boys Swimming and Diving Meet. The boys participated in Madison this past Saturday and did a fantastic job. Nate Summers earned medals in the 100 free, 200 free, as he placed sixth in both races. Emily Cook News. Emily Cook uh, showing the Cougar Way. Students at Emily Cook, led the student led um, by the student council, are focusing in on their acts of kindness. Every Monday, the entire school meets and reviews the monthly themes and the Cougar Way. To task the success, each class uh, puts uh, a bar um, signifying ten acts of kindness uh, for each of the classes or adults. The acts of kindness thermometer is displayed in the main hallway, and so far, students have documented over 330 acts of kindness. Uh, acts of kindness were again demonstrated during Valentine's Day celebration. On Valentine's Day, all students were invited to come to the gym for a Valentine bingo. Older students um, were uh, paired with primary students to help the number and letter identification process. Oshkosh North swimmers compete at the state. Oshkosh North high school swimmers who com competed at the WIAA state meet were left to right. Ryan Balinski, uh, Rebelinski, uh, who finished third in the 200 um, IM and seventh in the 100 fly. Uh, uh, Summer Lada, uh, who finished 18th in the 100 breaststroke. And Brandon Drexler and Jared Leader, uh, who joined Rebelinski and Lada in the 200 meter relay, finished 23rd at the state. Webster Stanley Middle School holds their first um, semester award ceremony. On February 13th, the Webster Stanley Middle School students earned awards for their accomplishments. Some of the awards were given out for sports such as cross country, uh, dance, volleyball, basketball, as well as clubs uh, such as uh, Student Council and Lego League. Uh, students were also recognized for their achievements scholastically. Uh, both uh, between the different awards, students and the staff participated in competitions such as volleyball passing, uh, lightning for basketball, uh, and even hula hoop. Uh, there was a, a great music played by the jazz band. It was, um, it was a great day for students to shine and to celebrate all the accomplishments thus far in the school year. Um, come to see Susie Cole Jr. The, this weekend, Oshkosh Recreation Department, the Jolly Jesters uh, Children's Theater will present Susie Cole Jr., a musical featuring uh, characters from Dr. Seuss books. The musical will be presented on Friday uh, the 27th at 7 p.m., Saturday the 28th at 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. and Saturday uh, and Sunday, March 1st at um, 2 p.m. in the Alberta Kimball Auditorium. Tickets are available at the Oshkosh Recreation Department office located at 425 Division, or you can purchase them at the door on the day of the performance. Ticket prices are, as stated, $4 for adults, $2 for students, 
and two dollars for students uh, for senior citizens with the donation of a non-perishable can, uh, canned food item uh, the adult ticket price can be reduced to three dollars canned food items will be donated to a local food pantry there will be 104 students um, grades one through eight participating in this production and then lastly you'll find the activities of the superintendents been engaged in in the last two week period with that the completes uh, uh, the superintendent's report uh, 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 President. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have other reports from board members? Yep. Allison? Uh, Facilities and Finance Committee met on February 16th. Uh, we went through an auto, uh, an audit report with Dave Mako. Uh, basically, he said everything is in order. Audit looks good. The district's total assets are approximately $23 million. Uh, fund balance decreased and is currently 16% of our expenditures in the, in the general fund and uh, we receive about 66 million in federal and state funding. Um, he let us know that there's two new requirements um, and we'll be able to meet those. The budget variance report, Sue Schnorr reported that less has been spent this year than at the same time last year. So, um, you know, that's a good thing. We're not going to do a line by line just yet. Uh, it's a little too early in the year. Um, and then we did briefly talk about carryover and whether there were limits and um, Sue said that there are currently there's no limits but we do monitor that you know if we have sites that have a lot of carryover then we need to figure out why that's going on. Uh, Jim Fox told us about the McKinstry Energy Exemption Projects. Um, he meets with them weekly and he said the projects are all moving along nicely. They all of the work will be bid out the first week and then we'll have those bids back I believe the third work third week of March and then um, plan on working beginning in June. Um, projects include Lakeside Smith, Roosevelt Exterior, Shapiro Mechanicals and Central. Next year will be North and the remainder of the Roosevelt Exterior exterior and Mechanical Interiors. Uh, update on Oakland spending. We still have about $90,000 balance remaining. The city has tentatively accepted the garage design there. Um, this will be sent out for bid, uh, and we expect that those numbers to come back in a couple of weeks um, <coughs> because the building is all masonry. The garage, in order to match, it has to be masonry, so it's going to be kind of pricey. Uh, and the, it is determined that we will go with slats and the fences uh, on at, instead of uh, landscaping due to the location beside the school. The Lakeside Project update we're basically going to get tonight. Uh, the bids came in yes yesterday and will be presented tonight. Um, it was reported that there was a great turnout for the bid walkthrough. The um, bids that will not be accepted are uh, those referencing the lockers, access points for IT and hallway flooring. Um, but there is possibility that any of the contingency funds could be used for that and the playground. Uh, we talked about parking lots. Parking lot fees and fines, it was the hope that we could maybe increase uh, a little bit of revenue with parking lot fees. So we increased that fee, uh, I believe it was by $50 to $75. It's been two years. We've uh, received about $25,000 uh, increase last year, and this year it's $22,600. Um, they also wanted to um, not necessarily provide fines for the people that were parking there without a permit, but they did want to have some kind of integrity to the parking permit itself. So staff do take 20 to 25 minutes a day and go walk through the parking lot make sure everybody has uh, a sticker. Uh, they are prorated. Uh, the ticket revenue has decreased for the fines, so that's good. Um, we talked about the eCook Association site improvements. They are set to begin this summer. Uh, they're, in pro they're in the process of redrawing the parking lot to incorporate more of the eCook's long-term vision. Uh, the horseshoe drop-off would incorporate some handicapped parking because there's no parking there right now. And the butterfly garden will have to be moved. Um, and let's see, sidewalks will be replaced, bike racks, racks will be expanded, uh, and then the parking lot will be completely redone. The entire front of the, of the entire front from a hardscape perspective will be redone to give the building a better look. Uh, and then we asked about improved lighting in the back. So Jim said he would look into that. And the last thing that we talked about was the Sheldon Nature Center deed restriction. There's a group of people who take care of the Sheldon Nature Center, as we all know, and they're concerned that future boards might not um, 
not necessarily they don't want the, the nature center to be there, but they might change it for some reason. And so they want to make sure that that does not happen. Um, they did try to go for land trust, and we know that that did not go. So they're, we're basically in conversation with them uh, about getting some kind of a deed restriction to keep that the land as it is. Our <coughs> next meeting will be March 19th at 8 a.m. Thank you very much. Uh, other board reports? No, seeing none, then actually I'm going to just ask Stan to, uh, since uh, earlier we were looking at uh, uh, presentations that were uh, via PowerPoint, uh, Stan had mentioned, and people might not understand uh, why these things are in front of us. Sure. Uh, if you want to restate <laughs> now that uh, we're right. actually looking at them, right. uh, what these uh, sure. items actually are here for. Yeah. These are um, the result of um, uh, the Oshkosh uh, School District, um, uh, primarily teachers and um, uh, other employees and administrators participating in um, the annual um, Oshkosh Corporate uh, YMCA Corporate Challenge. And um, uh, and um, these are individual certificates um, or uh, plaques um, for uh, individual awards, and then uh, the uh, the total points eventually lead to um, earning the corporate cup. And uh, this year, for one of the first times in recent years, uh, the corporate cup was earned by uh, these engaged individuals. Um, who um, in the presentation we had a, a photo of all of those folks participating in this um, and um, different um, organizations and corporations participate and uh, uh, and it's part of uh, our effort also to make sure that um, our employees in the school district participate in I activities of the community and so we congratulate um, all of those participants who um, uh, took a Saturday to um, become very involved in in the corporate uh, uh, challenge with the YMCA and it also in the long run is a fundraiser for the YMCA as well. Yes, and we thank everyone involved. All right, so next on the agenda, non-agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak this evening on an item that is not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, uh, agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight on an item that is on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, we will go to the consent resolution agenda. The consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item, or as discussed at a previous meeting, these will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and be voted on separately. Uh, number nine is being pulled. Are there any others? I asked about eight. Uh, number eight. Anything else? All right. Then uh, the board will consider approval of minutes of January 28th, 2015 regular board meeting. Number two, minutes of January 28th, 2015 executive session. Number three, minutes of February 11th, 2015 special board meeting. Number four, minutes of February 11th, 2015 regular board meeting. Number five, bills payable. Number six, personnel. A, appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, uh, retirements, and salary schedule. And number seven, 2015-2016 student and teacher calendar. Number 10, recommendation to the governor and state legislator to revise the governor's budget to restore school funding in 2015-17 budget. And number 11, summer school administrator appointments and salary schedule. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Lemberger? Aye. Lemberger, aye. Saganak? Aye. 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 Resolution number eight. We resolved that the Ashkosh Area School District Board of Education approved Custom Res uh, Restoration Inc. of Pewaukee, Wisconsin as the contractor for the exterior masonry restoration at the Recreation Gym Building in the amount of $113,678 for fiscal year 2014-15 as filed with the Secretary of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion? I had asked that this be pulled because I wanted to be able to commend Mr. Wenig for a very well done report. Um, it's not only important, I think, to provide comprehensive information in the staff reports for the board, but also for citizens and those in the community who would like a, a better idea of what's going on. Um, I found that report to be very consistent with Board Policy 170, stating that we should be provided with uh, comprehensive staff reports for uh, workshop items, although this wasn't a workshop, it was um, a, 
resolution. And secondly, it's, it's uh, consistent with the second strategic goal dealing with providing the board with comprehensive information so that we can make database decisions. So I just wanted to commend Mr. Wenig for a job well done. And actually, uh, since this has been pulled, uh, I'd like to commend him for uh, continuously throughout the six years that I've been on the board uh, presenting uh, uh, a budget that uh, manages to keep everything afloat. Um, uh, he does an excellent job uh, uh, maintaining uh, programs that uh, might otherwise fall through the cracks uh, and uh, doing so uh, uh, seemingly uh, at minimal effort, although I'm sure on, on his <laughs> end, you know, that, that I can't imagine uh, uh, what he must go through every year to uh, succeed. Uh, but yes, every year he manages to uh, present us with a budget that stays uh, more or less even keeled and within the line of his previous budgets and yet uh, uh, produce uh, programs and, and items like this, uh, just you know, improvements to his building, which generally would come out of capital uh, budgets, uh, uh, and he's doing it uh, out of his own budget. So congratulations. Thank you very Science. much. I do, I totally agree with all the comments, and it just should be noted the fact that this is um, coming from uh, the recreation budget, not from, uh, it doesn't compete with the operational budgets of the school district, um, and it does not take a, a, a penny away from instructional expenditures. Okay. Please call the roll. Harberger? Aye. Harberger, aye. Saganak? Aye. 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 Turn it over to um, Jim Fox. Um, uh, we, we were present with um, bid openings um, yesterday afternoon, and with the very short turnaround um, with bid openings, we asked and, and had the agenda changed just to ask, asking for the authority to select. Um, we're down to um, uh, the we believe to be the. Um, uh, the uh, lowest um, legitimate bidder on it, but um, we wanted to be sure that we checked every detail of qualifications um, so that we could proceed with the process, and that process is well underway. We expect to um, have that determination no later than Friday, uh, and um, uh, being able to uh, then uh, act on um, proceeding with um, uh, the contractor, this tight timeline that we're working on with the goal and the joy of hopefully having a building that uh, children at Lakeside can walk into uh, uh, on the um, uh, first day of school in September will be uh, the goal. And um, we did not want to delay any longer um, the ability to proceed. And so with that, uh, I'll have um, Jim and our architect uh, uh, guest um, uh, speak to the issue. Thanks, Dan. Uh, with me is Jeffrey Bray of uh, Bray Architectural. Uh, the uh, bid process went quite well. Uh, the num numbers came in actually just a little bit below where we had estimated them to be, which is um, which is to our favor, of course. Uh, just tonight we had um, received uh, somewhat of a resume construction projects completed by one of the lowest bidders. Um, the two low bidders are Capel and Dietrich and Myron Construction. They are within uh, what, four, four or five thousand dollars of each other. Four or five thousand? Uh, what is it? Um, that is close. It is close. close. It's it's uh, six forty nine to six fifty four. <laughs> Two million six. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they're quite close. Uh, we are familiar with um, with Myron Construction. I'm less familiar with uh, Capel and Dietrich, uh, except for some smaller projects. So we're going to review their resume, um, review their capabilities, and um, as Mr. Mack had indicated, we'll make that determination by Friday to make sure that they are they're capable and their sublists are capable of completing the project successfully, <coughs> and uh, we will move forward. Capel and Dietrich was two million six forty nine thousand, and uh, Myron was two million six fifty four thousand. Uh, that is with the acceptance of the alternates. So base bid okay. for Capel and Dietrich was two million five hundred forty thousand eight hundred eighty, and Myron was two million five hundred fifty eight thousand 
961. Uh, so there was a bit more uh, of a range when you look at the base bid. Once you accept all the alternates, uh, they were then uh, within $5,000 of one another. And since we are beneath our threshold, we intend to accept the alternates, I assume? We are at a tipping point with accepting the alternates. Uh, we're in discussion right now where we may accept one of the alternates. We may hold an alternate till later in the project. Uh, we have some soft numbers that we are uncertain of. For example, uh, the possibility of having to relocate fiber optic does exist. Um, there are a couple other items. Uh, the soils, uh, we're a little concerned about some of the uh, allowances that we have for soils. <coughs> and okay. uh, we want to make sure that we're somewhat conservative in the approach to our project that we uh, have allowed any problems that do crop up that we can fund them properly. Uh, so we are, uh, in fact, we're just in discussion tonight about accepting uh, possibly one or, or maybe two at this point of the um, uh, of the alternates, maybe holding on to a third alternate, and if that uh, money does not get expended through um, the allowances provided or some of the contingency that is present within a project, we may then expend that money on the third allowance with the flooring and, and some of the other renovations in the facility. One of the issues that um, we are concerned with is um, um, because although the addition is new construction, it is the contingencies that I worry about in the attachment to the um, what we open up with the existing building. Um, Any time that you um, um, and having uh, spent lots of time on new construction, but much more of my career on remodeling, I know how um, surprises can occur with um, remodeling projects and gym uh, of the same mind. And, uh, and um, that we want to be sure that um, we are, are careful that when we uncover something on the existing building, when we attach it, there is not some a surprise there. And um, to wanting to live within uh, the, the fully allocated budget uh, for that. But uh, that's our, our biggest caution. Uh, we're really pleased that it fits within the uh, amount of revenue that's available for this project. But um, the concern really relates to um, the connection between buildings that you can end up with surprise is in, in a, a building that you're attaching to and that uh, building has a is a collection of, of past construction projects that uh, um, uh, we even discovered that there aren't always the best um, uh, outlines of um, uh, plans of what existed in in that uh, in that building but um, it's all good news as far as uh, moving ahead um, we're excited about this opportunity we are just a reminder for the board um, you know, we, we made some effort through this uh, through this process to try to unite and unify some of the old building with the newer part of the building through the roof design. Uh, we're also taking some of this information and we're sharing it with McKinstry, so we're going to carry the same manufacturer of windows, same manufacturer of doors, um, and that will move into the McKinstry project to really try to pull the exterior and, and some of the interior flooring and, and various items to try to unify that building. It, it truly is exciting. I, um, uh, that was one of my worries that caused uh, some sleepless nights in the last few weeks, hoping that uh, we suddenly didn't get bad news, that uh, we were suddenly, uh, uh, bids came in $500,000 over or $600,000 over, uh, over the project. But uh, uh, we were really pleased with um, uh, seeing the good news and the celebration for the Lakeside community. I don't know, Stan, perhaps I could ask you or Jim, but I'm curious, could you describe in brief when you've got bids that are so close and one contractor has got a long history in the Fox Valley that we know well has done projects for us, one unknown. How do you um, weigh out that uh, scale of uh, yeah. award? We, we, we do need to um, review um, uh, the individual. Um, uh, the, the biggest issue when you're that close is to take a look at the um, uh, the subcontractors too so that uh, those match. And, and you might want to describe, you did a cross check of, um, of um, even the sub Bid or the um, uh, uh, sub-bidders, uh, that um, subcontractors, uh, to make sure that uh, there was validity to those bids, so they didn't look overlook something. Um, and uh, you know, we we were. I was personally hoping um, that uh, uh, firm we had the greatest experience with would be um, the low bidder, uh, but we um, have to carefully analyze and make sure that um, uh, the other bidder, um, the other bidder has done some work for us on smaller projects, and so we do have uh, that, and that's why an extensive list of um, uh, complete projects and um, projects in progress by the other bidder um, is being reviewed to make sure. Mm -hmm. 
one of the things that we ask for in our bidding process is we ask for the general number at one time, which was 2 o'clock. They all put in their general number. But then what we ask for at 3 o'clock, that they actually fax in all their sub-bids. So they might have three or four in that sub-bid category, such as the heating, the electrical, or the windows, or all that. So we actually see all their sub-bids. And then between the different contractors, you can see that most of them use the same sub-bidders in their documents because the number was the lowest one. So comparing the first one and the second one, you'll see that uh, probably 40 or 50, 60 or 70 percent are the same groups, sub-bidders to them, but they have a couple different ones, and the, that's the ones that we're going to investigate a little bit more. If, if a heating guy is different or electrical person is different, that they're qualified and can uh, do that project. Mm -hmm. Jim, I know there was a, a question in the facilities and finance meeting recently about the bidding process. And the question, I think, was along the lines of, are we obligated to take the lowest bidder? And I think you indicated that there was some, um, there were some circumstances under which that was not necessarily the case. Sure. Could you elaborate on that, please? Well, as uh, as Jeff had uh, alluded to, if if through our analysis uh, we're reviewing some of the bidders within the low bid, and if um, if if they have a, a poor track record, or if if we feel there's an indication based on past practice that. Um, we don't feel they're capable or we're not <coughs> confident in their ability to complete the job on time, on budget, the way we want to see that job performed. Uh, we certainly have the ability to take the next bidder. Mm -hmm. um, and we can continue to move up the ladder until we feel comfortable. Um, it's not uncommon, uh, for example, in the um, uh, rec center restoration project, uh, low bidder um, willingly rejected their own bid because they had missed some items um, for the same reason. Sometimes bidders miss items. Sometimes you review a bid list and you may you may find that they've missed items or you may feel uncomfortable with that particular bidder. Um, th the main thing is that the, the people bidding the job and, and the owner have a, a level of comfort with the project. Very good. This um, resolution states that the, we would um, approve this resolution. We would give that uh, administration the authority to accept the lowest qualified bid so I'm not sure how that would mesh with what Jim just yeah. said if there should be some revision in the well, wording the word qualified is really the, the okay. key term in there mm -hmm. Mr. Dino? Uh, this all falls on falls underneath uh, policy 670 and within 670 on accept, uh, accepting purchasing bids in any construction that's over fifteen thousand dollars the board has the white right, right to waive uh, the bidding process and accept a bid that they feel is in the best interest of the school district. So, I mean, we would be relying on you guys to do your due diligence on cross-referencing, but mm -hmm. if you guys come back with that, that's within our policy and within our mm -hmm. charge to do this. We would be on solid ground with, with that, and that's why the um, research, additional research and work between now and Friday is, is critical and that uh, we do so. I would also like to say this is a very exciting project. Um, it's, it, I believe it's good for families in that Lakeside Green Meadow attendance area because for the first time in many years, ch uh, families with children in grades K through 5 can attend the same elementary school and not be broken up. And so, again, I would like to commend Jim and Sue and Amy Ashton and the parent group and whoever else was involved in this project, including Mr. Bray. Uh, because I think this is a long overdue project and I'm really thrilled that the district has found the means to do this. It's, it, to me, it's the right thing for the families and for the children. So I'm very happy that we're going to be able to move forward with this. So thank you to everybody who worked on this. I, uh, I will celebrate when we have the, um, the, the building ready to be occupied. <laughs> but I can tell you that um, uh, on my first interview with this board, on the first night that I met this board, uh, this this issue was one that was discussed in the first um, interview about a south side solution. And uh, uh, and so getting to closure, it uh, will take um, uh, three years and, um, and uh, two months to have accomplished it, but we will have gotten to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? Please call the roll. Say it again. 
Wheat top? Aye. Wheat top, aye. Dito? Aye. Dito, aye. Elias? Aye. Elias, aye, Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Aye. Number, aye. Washington, aye. Number, aye. Washington, aye. All right. Uh, the request for future agenda items? Seeing mm -hmm. none. Uh, announcements? Seeing none. Um, can we get a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purposes of considering employment, promotion, compensation, and performance evaluations data of any public employee or over which the governmental body has jurisdiction, jurisdiction, excuse me, or ex exercises responsibility under 19.851C of Wisconsin State Statutes, A, preliminary notice of non-renewal of temporary teacher contracts. Two, consideration, uh, excuse me, considering the disciplinary data of specific persons under 19.851F of Wisconsin State Statutes, A, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who repeatedly refused to uh, refused or neglected to obey school rules under 120.131C of Wisconsin State Statutes, and B, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others at school, and two, endangered the property, health, or safety of a school authority or endangered the property, health, or safety of any employee or school board member of the school district, and three, repeated refusal or neglect to obey school rules under Wisconsin State Statutes 120.131C with Wisconsin State Statutes. So moved. Second. We are adjourned to executive session. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wheaton Hoff, Dito. Aye. Wheaton Hoff, Dito. Aye. Dito, I, Eliza. Aye. Eliza, I, Garner. Aye. Garner, I, Herzog. Aye. Herzog, I, Lumberger. Aye. L